I am uh, Jeff Kramer. This talk is Hello PyBot. It's about building uh, chatbots for Slack. Um, the code and links to the slides are up on the GitHub repo if you want to follow along. Uh, I am Jeff K on Twitter. Uh, I work in the data infrastructure team at Vox Media. You may know us from such sites as SB Nation or The Verge or Polygon or Vox.com. Uh, we have a small outpost in Austin, uh, which is where I work. Uh, so a small bit of bot history. Um, I'm, I'm happy that we have managed to use the ancient aliens meme in two bot talks in the same room within two hours of each other. Uh, we're doing really well on that particular meme. Uh, so bots are definitely not a new thing. Uh, anybody who's been around long enough to have used IRC is very familiar with bots, like Eggdrop that would manage IRC channels for you. Uh, essentially, bots are anything with a conversational interface. They're a conversational interface to the execution of code. Uh, and usually they run sort of autonomously. Um, I got into, well, my first interaction with bots were through uh, text-based multiplayer games, MUDs and Moos, back in the 90s. Uh, we had bots for enemies and bots for, uh, like, non-player characters you could talk to, things like that. Um, in the early 2000s, there was a startup called uh, Smarter Child. Well, Smarter Child was their first product. It was an, AI, uh, an AIM bot that you could talk to. And at the peak of its popularity, it had had conversations with something like 30 million people, which, considering the internet in the early 2000s, is a pretty big number. Uh, you may have used chat uh, systems like Campfire or HipChat and now Slack. This talk is specifically about Slack bots, but uh, HipChat supports them as well. I'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, so we have our, our little ancient aliens dude. Our ancient aliens dude was actually created by a bot. Uh, at Vox Media, we use Slack pretty extensively, and we have a bot called CFBot, which we started using Campfire. It was built for Campfire, and we've ported it through the years. Uh, Bots make it really easy to use functionality that otherwise you would have to go into other places to execute. So uh, one of the things that CFBot can do is it can caption images. Uh, we use GIF messages to communicate feelings to each other a lot at Slack. Uh, so this is particularly helpful. Uh, so we can do things like this. And this is how I made the bot's GIF. So Slack bots. They can sit in channels, and, and you can talk to them and ask them to do stuff for you. So uh, at the end of this talk, I hope that you will have as much of an understanding of how you build bots for Slack as you would need if somebody said, hey, do you know how to build a bot for our Slack? You will say, yes, I do, because I went to this 20-minute talk. So there are a couple of IO methods that you can use to get stuff into and out of Slack that we're not going to talk about today or we're not going to show code for. But just so you know, they, they exist. So Slack supports incoming webhooks. So when you create an incoming webhook integration in Slack, you go to a page and you say, I want to create uh, like an incoming webhook for Jenkins. So whenever Jenkins wants to do something, it's going to use this webhook URL, this unique uh, sort of a password URL, because it's very long and, and not easy to guess. Uh, and it's going to let Jenkins post stuff into Slack without any other, any other authentication. So what uh, Jenkins or whatever external system you'll have will get this URL. It will send a JSON payload with a message, optionally a icon for its user, optionally a nickname for its user. Uh, and it posts that to Slack, and it appears in your channel. Uh, incoming webhooks are all about information flowing into Slack. Outgoing webhooks are the, the other side of that. You can say every time something is posted in a channel or every time a trigger word, like a sentence starts with blank, post to a URL. So in this case, you're essentially building a web application that responds to posts with messages that get pushed back into Slack. Well, they, 
end up back into Slack. So uh, a post comes in with message text and who said it and what channel it was in, and you reply with some JSON that's like, oh, here, this is the message that you should display in that channel. Uh, this only works for public chats. You can't have a private chat uh, and have an outgoing webhook work. Uh, there are also slash commands. This is when you do like slash weather zip code. Uh, this is a HTTP post as well, um, but only the user who types the slash gets the response. So this is for things where you want to look up something, but you're not necessarily wanting to share it with anybody else. Uh, there is a web API that is HTTP RPC style, um, and Slack also supports IRC and XMPP integrations. If you wanted to build a bot for HipChat, I think bots for HipChat are built with XMPP, the chat protocol, um, but that is not what Slack recommends that you use. Uh, Slack has a real-time messaging API. Um, because Slack is super modern. So it uses WebSockets, and it's used by all the Slack clients. So whenever you log into Slack through your iPhone or through the desktop application, all of these things connect to the WebSocket API. So your bots connect to the same endpoints and use the same communication methods that clients do. You are pushed met all messages in all channels that you were in, which is why your Slack client can show you, like, hey, these messages, there are 10 unread messages in here. Your Slack client is keeping track of state. Um, so you're pushed all the messages and all the channels that you're in. You're also pushed things like this user became active, uh, this user started typing, stuff like that. We'll, we'll look at that in a second. Uh, commonly used with bot users, bot users are a special type of Slack user. They can't join channels by themselves. They have to be invited. There are some other restrictions. They're always active unless somebody sets, uh, unless you specifically say, I'm away. Uh, this is what the top half of the integration settings looks like for a bot user. Uh, bot users don't log in with usernames and passwords. They have API tokens. Um, you will need that in a settings file in a second. Uh, you can customize their name, give them an icon, give them a first and last name. Uh, so that is that. So now we're going to look at some example code. Um, so here's, here's an example of what an incoming webhook would look like before I get to the real-time API stuff. Uh, so here's a post of um, some JSON. This is posted to general and comes from monkeybot into channel general. Um, and you would get a, a unique URL for your incoming webhook. And then an outgoing webhook, you would get a post like this, where you would see um, channel name, timestamp, username, the text that they posted, the trigger word, and then you would be able to send a response like that in JSON back to it. Um, pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, so, for the code that I'm about to show, which is up on the GitHub repo, um, there's one dependency, Slack client, which is Slack's official Python client, uh, but that's it. So there's a creds.cfg in here where you put your token. Um, let's see, I'm going to load up a Slack. Okay, so we have a Slack channel here called bots, and I've already created a bot integration for it. Um, and I have a simple postscript. So this lets you post a message into a Slack channel, and that's all it does. Um, so we do post, the channel is bots. Yes, the channel is bots, and this is our message. So we run the code over in our Slack room. Pybot, our little bot integration that I set up earlier, posts, this is our message. And then the script exits. So let's look at the code on how to make that happen. So this is post.py. We'll get back to the post function in a second. Uh, it uses arg parse to parse the arguments and config parse to parse the config. Um, and then it creates a uh, instance of the Slack client, you feed the Slack client your token. 
once you have your SOC client back, you call RTM Connect, which opens a WebSocket connection to Slack. Uh, and once that is done, you can post things. Uh, so I said the bot users can, they can't join channels. They have to be invited into channels. So the first thing that we do is some error checking to make sure that the bot user, the user we're logging in on, on as is actually in the channel. Um, so we check, uh, we find the channel that you're trying to post in and we error out if the channel wasn't found. Um, we say uh, for user, uh, does the user actually exist? And if the user ID is not in channel members, then we can't post into that channel, so uh, a warning message. And then we, we just call this function on the Slack client, which is send message into the channel. So channels have a send message function and you, you post a message in. Um, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, but not what we necessarily think of when we think of call and response for bots. So there's another script in the Git repo uh, called Converse. Um, Converse is a little mm, fancier. Um, so Converse has a debug option on it, which prints out every message that you get back from Slack. Uh, so when you log into Slack, you get a type hello message. It basically tells you that, yes, the API responded to you. And you get other messages like presence change, user became active. Uh, if I started typing over here, this is me typing, we would see user typing, user channel. Uh, when Slack throws stuff around, it throws around unique IDs for channels and users and um, Slack accounts. It doesn't use the names, it actually uses unique internal IDs. So if you want to know the real name that goes with that, you have to look it up in the client. Um, so we've built some functionality, which I'm going to show first. Uh, is it? Okay, that's not very helpful. Um, who am I? Okay, and uh, can we give up to? Okay, so three features that you might expect from a bot. Some simple kind of respond to me, I type some text, give me some text back. Uh, some that's kind of unique to who I am as a user and some that actually seems to have executed some code somewhere. So let's look at how we did that. So this bot uses a JSON file that has topics and responses. And this is that JSON file. So we have a phrase and we have what the response for it is. Uh, so what time is it? Whatever time it needs to be. Who am I? Your human meat bag. And then you'll see a Python style substitution in there. And then uptime. And here's our converse script. So the converse script looks a lot like our last one, uh, except it uses a class instead of just a, a function. Um, it loads our topics in, uh, it does a connection, and then it listens. And if we go look at our object up here, um, so connect does the same thing that we did in the other script. We create a new Slack client, uh, we call RTM connect on it, and then we print connect it to Slack. You can see that there's a little bit of a delay when you do the initial connection, so um, it does take some time to do the, the, the login. Uh, listen loops, it tries to read something from the client. There's RTM read, which will give you a list of dictionaries of all of the messages that have come in from Slack since, from the Slack API since the last time you called RTM connect, or to RTM read. Uh, so we go through that list for action and input. Uh, if self.debug, we print the action. Uh, that was that dash D flag when I started the script. And if the type is message, run process message. 
and sleep for a second. So we, we wait for other messages to come in. Process message looks through our topics to see if the text matches and um, formats a response with the information that's in the message. So user is a key in the message uh, dictionary that we get from Slack. So we can say, you are human meat bag identifier blank because Slack tells us who wrote the message uh, whenever it sends us a message. And then we have this simple, if response starts with sys, then uh, actually run whatever command I said to run uh, and read the output and send that back. Um, and then post does channel.send message. So we can see what it looked like. Uh, it's really hard to decipher. Um, so we can see that we got a message, who am I? Um, so the text was who am I? We have a timestamp, we have a user, uh, we have the team, which I think is the account, and then its type is message and the channel identifier. And then we post back into the same channel, your human meat bag identifier, um, doing substitution for user. Um, uptime, we basically just call out and run uptime and read in the, the results and post it back into the channel. So pretty easy to create a bot that listens inside of Slack and responds to messages that you want. Uh, Slack is, so there's the Slack client. Slack client is a pretty thin API wrapper. They've also built Python RTM bot. Python RPM bot is a lot like Converse, except it has support for plugins and it supports uh, scheduled messages. So you can book people in Slack every 10 minutes if you want. Uh, good place to start if you want to build something from scratch. If you're just looking to set up a Slack bot and you would like lots of functionality quickly, Slack has a list of Python um, projects that connect to Slack up on api.slack.com slash community pound Python. There are a big list of them. Air is a pretty popular chatbot, it seems. It has Slack support, it also has HipChat support, and Campfire support, and IRC support, uh, and it has plugins, and if you want a lot of features out of the box, it's probably a good place to start. It's a bigger project. There's something called Butterfield that uses async IO. One interesting thing is that if you don't do asynchronous stuff, your chatbot can block if you're like calling out to some script that generates uh, like funny GIF images. So some bots will use something like Celery or some other background processor to be able to respond quickly to things that they can respond quickly for, but let other more long running things sort of percolate in the background and then push the response back into the Slack channel when they're done with them. There's another API wrapper called Slacker uh, that's very active that I haven't used. Um, here are some resources. Uh, so I am Jeff K on Twitter. There is the GitHub URL for this project again. There's a dev for Slack Slack room where lots of people building Slack integrations hang out. It is hosted by a company in Austin called XOXCo. XOXCo is also hosting the ATX bot talk on October 21st. We're having a meetup in Austin to talk bots, where I, I will pre be presenting this again, but you don't have to listen if you don't want to. Um, documentation is up on api.slack.com slash web. Uh, good presentation if you're interested in sort of the overall buzz around bots right now is Your Friendly Robot Companions uh, by Ben Brown that was at Refresh Austin. Um, yeah, and we have data science and data engineering openings at Vox, of course. So if you're interested, please let me know. So questions before I get kicked out. No? Good? Cool. Thanks, everybody.